Alrighty, my darling. So off we go. Loopy bows on three. Oh wait. Um. Oh, I'm doing three, aren't I? You are doing three, but you recognised it, and that's really good because last week you happily played it in three, four, all the way through. I think it's just. I think it's just the, the, the beginning bit that always confuses me. Okay, how will you think? How many notes? How many beats on the first note? Four, and then you go into. No, so two, and then you go into four per bow, but it's always two per note. So yeah. count, count yourself two bars in before you play. That will help as well. Two, three, four. Okay. You did the first note perfectly. Well done, much better timing. Um, can you just turn your computer on, do not disturb, please, darling. Um, so that was really good, really great intonation. Your B flat was not quite flat enough for me, but otherwise perfect intonation. And um, just remember to always take your thumb with you. It's coming with you some of the way and then it sort of extends a little bit. Should we just do it one more time to see if we can get it really awesome? Do you wanna just do the major or the minor or do you wanna do the whole lot again? Okay. That's enough. Well done. So you remembered your um, taking your thumb with you. That's great. What can you think about for the shifts that will help you know where to go? Or are you cut out of it? What do you say? How, what can you think about with the shifts that will help you get to the right position? Um, like what position you're in. Good. Or? Um, how many... Uh, yeah. How many what? Yeah, so the interval, that's the phrase you're looking for, the interval that you've got to shift. Um, so, which do you find easier to think about? Um, the position. Okay, so I'm going to play and you're going to tell me what position I'm going to next. Okay. Okay. Oh, can you show me with your fingers because the sound doesn't work if you just say it.
Good, well done. Let's just try that one more time. So remember, if you're just going one step up, if you're in first position, that takes you to second position. And if you're going up to the top notes, then it's going into fourth position. Mm -hmm. One more time. See if you can do it quick enough to keep me in time. So a second is one step, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. A second is a tone. So a second is not going to take you very far away from where you are already. So if you have a very small distance to go, that's when you want the second. But so and because second position from first is only a second away. So second position and a second are kind of the same thing. Yeah. All right. Last time. Okay, one more thing before we stop talking about that. Um, what is this pattern at the beginning of tonalization? Um, is it an arpeggio? Excellent, a major arpeggio. And if we're talking about a major arpeggio, what notes of the scale is it? One, three, and five. And? One, two, five, and three. In music, one and what are the same note? Name. Yeah. Eight octave. Oh, yeah. So one, three, five, eight. And if you think about that on the stave, which I can't show you easily, so I'm not going to. But one to three is a skip. Yeah. Three to five is a skip. Five to eight is a jump. Yeah. Because it would be five to seven if it was the same. If we were going to play like a dominant or a dominant seventh. Um. So first position, third position. First position again, and then fourth position, because if you went to third position, it would just take you the same distance up that you went with your first shift. So that's help. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so last time. Good. me now and see if you can think about those positions. Do you want me to show you with my fingers? Uh, I Bravo, Lola. Well done. So much better than before. Well done. So put your violin down and can you write in your notebook when you're using tonalization on one finger, think about which position you're going into. All right, did you write them down? Yep. Great. Okay. Um, 
What would you like to show me? Um, should we go to Bach Gavots? Yeah. How are you doing with your memorising? Um, not as well, but I've been practising. I found the um, like the last section really difficult with like the. I've been doing that a lot. Yeah. You mean the last section of the first Gavot, or the last section of the whole piece? Uh, the last section of the whole piece. Okay. Sorry, I lost my, my stand. Is different setup for online and in person. <laughs> All right, my darling. So, um, shall we play it? Well, why don't you show me which bit you've been working on? And then we can see if you want to play it with me or to me or whatever. The part I've been struggling with? Or... Yeah. I mean, I know you've been practicing the whole thing, but do you have a bit that you still feel that you need help with? Just to ask, do I need to put the elastic band, band on both or just one? I only put it on one when I use them. But it's up to you. If you don't feel it's stable enough, two will be more stable. Okay, that was brilliant, by the way. Really, really good um, uh, string crossing. Uh, I normally teach this without the chords first time and then in review we learn the chords, but if, if you're desperate to play the chords, of course I'm not gonna stop you. Um, but it does make it quite a lot harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what have you been feeling about the chords? Some of them that I find easier I've been playing. Okay. I think, I think that approach is great for practice. But I think when you're going to play it through like a performance or a, or going for a credit or something, you kind of want to stick with either playing all of the chords or not playing any of the chords, except the ones that are actually printed. Yeah. So um, have you tried all of the chords in the last line? Double stops rather? Yeah, in the last line I have. Okay. Why don't you show me? That was really great though. The second, the, the string crossing bit. Well done. <laughs> It's not quite the notes that are printed on the note on the page. Can you play me 41, the top line? Oh. If you're leaning down for the to look at the music, put the stand a bit higher, sweetie. No, I'm Yep. Very good. Remember they're circles, not um, up, up, ups, but probably you were just thinking about your left hand. Okay, good. Bottom line, please. Just the bottom line. Okay, sorry, from here. And then do this at the bottom line. versions are excellent but something was happening before when you put them together so now can you do very carefully with like don't worry about the timing at all just play this part in time and then really check that you're playing the correct notes top and bottom oh. okay can you play me the first note of 49 good the second both, both notes. Good, the third. Ah, yes. And then the fourth. Good. So when you play, you then have three and one. And then 
your one just slides straight over to the D and your two goes a tone away. And then your three and open. So could you write above your music one and three on the B and the G? Okay. Can you play me from 40, halfway through? And when you get there, see if you can be careful with those chords. You've got there, well done. So above the B and the G, have you written one and then three underneath it? Yeah, so when you look at double stop fingerings, the top finger is the top string and the lower finger is the lower string. So if you play, that would be three one, just so that you know, yeah? I know that I just, I think I learned it wrong and that's confusing. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, can we, can you tell me which finger is not in tune here? Four. Yeah, so the four needs to stretch because it's just not ringing with open E. Can you go from there one more time? Take it slower if you want to or just think about stretching that four. Check your bow hold before you start, squishy knuckles, beautiful. Yeah, well done, you just did the second bowing for the first time. Well done, much better. So can you write on the music there, careful with four intonation. It's funny, I've been teaching in Suzuki Hub by myself for the whole of lockdown and I was so miserable about it and now lovely Irene is teaching next, next door and I'm like, shh. <laughs> I really noticed the difference in the sound. I really, I hadn't thought about that at all. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so let's do, should we do the whole of Gavotte number two? Because we didn't spend much time on it recently. Yeah. And then we can see how much of Gavotte one you can remember. Yeah? So what I want you really to remember, don't worry about the double stopping, you can put that in at home or leave it until review. Um, but I really want you to think about those up bow circles. So this is a hook, then the reverse the ticks. And I, I know we call them circles, but they're really kind of like eggs, like boiled eggs, um, because you want to, you don't want to go too far away from the string, and they're just very small and delicate. Um, but it's not just, you know, up bow spiccato. All right, my love. Knuckles, wonderful the first time and then the second time you were just doing um, scoops so can you write 
What do you think it would help you to remember? Eggs or retakes? Uh, <laughs> eggs and hooks, I think. Okay, eggs, not hooks. How about you write that above? Well, you know where it is, don't you? 37 and 39. And just really keep thinking about bringing that bow hold back to the squashy knuckles because I know when you're doing those up bow retakes, it's easy to lose your bow hold. But if you really think about keeping it, then they'll be even more beautiful because they are really like working as a shock absorber. Otherwise, it'll become a little bit like. Don't worry. Already, darling, let's do it one more time. So, hang on, set your bow before you play. That's it. And then you've, you've done your repeat. That was brilliant. Well done. Really, really gorgeous. Hadn't you done your repeat? I'm sure you had. Now I'm doubting. I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very, very good. Well done. Beautiful. So um, I'm going to send you a link to a spider press ups video. Do you remember your spider press ups? Is it like. Exactly. Normally we're going to do it on a table. Yeah. But just if you can just do some like when you're bored at school, online school, um, you know, just some of the time just to like remind your knuckles of that feeling. Yeah. Um, and then on the bow is a great idea as well. Uh, so let me send you this link. And can you write in your notebook, do try and do 50 press up, 50 spider press ups a day. They take, you know, five per second or something. Alrighty. Good. So, <coughs> excuse me. So 50 on the, on a table or something, and then just some like this on your string, maybe 15 each practice. Can you try some for me? Yeah, really good. Because what happens is when you start your bow hold perfectly, it's brilliant. But then as you play, things happen, you think about other things and your, your hand comes out of position and then you just don't quite have the kind of automatic response to do, bring it back. So hopefully if we do those two exercises, that will make it more automatic and you'll have to think about it less. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so can you write 15 on your, 15 on the bow in your notebook as well? Alrighty. Alright my love, so let's do 
the first gavotte. Do you want to play it straight away to me or do you want to play it with me and then I'll hear it after without me? With me, okay. So stick yourself on mute. Um, I will just remind you the easiest part to forget and the kind of most important, I think, corner for the harmony to remind, uh, the, the harmony memory is when you get to the end of the first page. <laughs> B and F sharp. Otherwise you end up going round and round page one and you never get to the end of the second half. Okay? If it's not staying in the right place, take the put it upside down, take the band off. Not off the violin, just take it, yeah. Put, put the shoulder rest exactly where you want it and then put the band on because the, the rubber band will just pull back to wherever it was put on. There you go. Alrighty, so, um, think about your, that's lovely. <laughs> So let's just see how it goes without the music, even if you don't remember it, that's okay, because otherwise we're repeating what we did last week. Okay? Yes, you did, but don't worry. Um, should we just go from the low C sharp? Da, 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 da. Down bow, you're doing really well. It's like C sharp, so just raise your three a bit more. about the bowing just think about the pitch can you get the pitch of the notes right okay. 
Okay. Can you hear it in your head? If I play, can you hear the next note in your head? Good, so now can you find it on your violin? Too high or too low? Okay, starts on A sharp. So is the F sharp right, do you think? Do you think it's too high or too low? Start on A sharp. Well done, so try a note lower. What do you think about that? Do you think that's right? Yes, exactly right. So the thing about memorizing is that often you know the tune in your head already because you've done all your listening and your fingers just don't quite know which note to play and it's very easy just to play the same thing over and over again and hope that it will be right but of course it's not going to be right if it's not right the first time it's not going to be right the tenth time so it's much better but di more difficult to stop yourself and think okay I'm going to play the notes I know are right like and then try and hear the next note in my head and then just go like is it that one no is it that one no is it this one ah there it is or Okay, that's too high, like you did then. And you might have done... No, closer but not right. Ah, there it is. So it's absolutely fine to play the wrong notes because the only way you're going to find the right note is by trying a bunch of notes. And then if you realise that you don't know what the note sounds like inside your head, then you can do more listening. And look at the music. Okay? Good. So let's go from... and see what happens. Nearly. Okay, so so I think if you, so your first section you know exactly right, we've just got a tiny bit of note order in bar seven to sort out. I think that you need to do a bit of look, look away on this section because the pieces are getting hard to memorize just by listening now. Um, but I think if you skip that bit, or we'll play one bit each, if I play this middle section where we are at the moment and you take over here, you might well be able to get, sorry, to, to the end of that section. Yeah? So I'll go from here and you take over in a minute. No, you were right. Okay, so then you just need to do a little bit more look look away with your music. But you're very, very close. Well done. You've got, you know, the first section perfect. So do you want to put your music on your stand, please? And um, let's just play with the music from the second half, that same bit that I just started on. 
think about your bow hand before you start, my love. Have you ordered a new shoulder rest? No, we should. <laughs> yes, please. I was, going to look, I was going to look for it, but then I got sent. Oh. Fortunately, they're not too expensive. Well done, love. So your memory strategies are Don't look away. Great. Um, like like playing the like the, the the piece in your head, and then when you get stuck, remembering that, and then figuring out. Excellent. Well done. So like mental practice, really good. Um, rhythm practice, be one. No, rhythm practice is to develop um, the skills of playing fast notes. Yeah. Not really remember. I mean, they, it does help with remembering because obviously you're playing, but uh, it's not really a memory strategy. I'll give you a clue. Um, playing with a... Partner. Yes. If you don't have a partner in your house, where is your partner? Um, playing with a... Playing with a teacher. Playing with a... Sorry? Teacher, yes, with playing with a video. Any time of day or night you can play with a video and that will help your memory because you're following a leader but you're not looking at the music. Yeah, very good. So look, look away, uh, mental practice, playing with a video, listening while... Listening while fingering, like, thinking about the fingers. Excellent, fingering along and listening while... Uh, reading music. Looking at the music. Brilliant. So those are your top five approaches, um, and you know, active listening, like listening while you're listening to the while you're looking at the music or fingering along, is the best. But obviously, just having it on in the background also makes a difference. Really brilliant. Well done, you. Um, we'll just sort out the notes in bar seven. So this is halfway through six. You're playing this. Can you hear the difference? Yeah, so you're just doing a little bit of what happens later in bar 17, but it's inverted, so it's flipped upside down in bar seven. So, so it goes up then down the scale. Yeah, can you just play me that? Well, so you've got several ways you can remind yourself about that. In the music, you can either just put a wiggly line that goes up and then down and then up to the four, or you can write in the finger numbers, or you can draw some spectacles or whatever. It's going to help you remember that. Alrighty. Okay, thank you. Are you all right? Okay, um, excellent work Lola, well done. And um, so when do you get out of quarantine? What date? The 11th, I think. The 11th. Oh, that is a shame I'm finished then. I think, I think you can cope with my lessons being online, can't you? It's not super helpful to, well, it's not worth reorganising everything to try and get that out the other side. Okay, brilliant. So next week we're going to look at Bach Double again and the slow movement, and we'll see how you're getting on with this in terms of memory, but we'll keep going on those two as well. Great, let's have a bow. Well done, Lola, really proud of you. Thank you. See you later.